welcome. Oh. Happy Friday. <laughs> Woohoo, right? <laughs> yeah. See, Kat. Good to see everybody. So tonight we are going to change things up a little bit in the order. Um, we're going to be doing upper body tonight. So grab your low and high weights. I'm grabbing them now, low and high weights. And also please grab your tennis ball uh, so that we can uh, utilize those tools tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing mid body. So kind of have in your mind that we're going to be doing a lot of abdominals in the morning. I just thought that that might be a better thing to do um, than doing them tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, hopefully everybody feels the same way. So, so that's what we're going to do. So uh, mixing it up a little bit. Remember, and, and for those who have who've taken my classes, we, we do lots of different things. Um, but I thought that tonight would be a good night to, uh, to get the weights out of the way. And it'll be fun. So looking forward to uh, to doing some curls and, and lots of motions to really get into our, our body tonight. We're just going to give it just a couple more minutes. And uh, I hope everybody's had a, a good week. And I'm so happy it's the end of the week. I worked today and, um, and I'm doing uh, nursing tonight, a private uh, duty tonight. So I'm really looking forward to the practice today <laughs> so that we can really get into, uh, get into what we're doing. So just let a few more people in and then, and then we'll get moving. Okay. I am going to turn the camera around. I just, uh, while we're, while I'm letting people in last night, for some reason, I had some issues with, uh, with the, uh, the, the feed. So I just want to make sure that I'm letting people in properly and then we'll, uh, we'll be able to um, turn the camera around so you all can, can see a different viewpoint. So, so great to have everybody join us tonight. Sometimes on a Friday night, we decide that we don't really wanna do yoga or, or exercise in general. So I really appreciate everybody showing up for this day three of our challenge and, uh, and really looking forward to that. I'm gonna go ahead and get, get started just with some introductions and then I'll move the camera around. Uh, hi, my name is Antoinette, for those who haven't met me. And today is day three of our 28 day challenge. It's Friday, February 3rd. I'm gonna give a shout out tonight to my brother. It's his birthday. And I told him if he wanted to come online tonight that I was gonna be giving him a shout out and he could, uh, he could do yoga with us. So uh, hopefully that'll happen. Um, Tonight we're going to be doing upper body. So I would love it if you could grab your high and low weights. Now I've got a low weight, which is about a one pound, one and a half pound weight. And then I've got a five pound weight. And I chose you to, I chose getting two weights. And if you don't have weights tonight, you can also use a small and large soup can. Um, and that can be your weights or just a water bottle, just so that you have some sort of way of creating some resistance in what we're doing as far as our movements go. And if you don't wanna use weights, totally good too. So you don't have to use weights. Also, if you have on hand for your home studio, a tennis ball tonight, we're gonna to be doing some lymphatic massage. And then also I'm gonna show you trigger point massage uh, as we go into Shavasana tonight. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick roster and then we'll go ahead and, and get moving together with our class. So glad that we can all be together tonight on this Friday night. A few people X more in. Great turn out. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna turn the camera around. Ta -da, I love it when it works on a Friday. All right, so here we go. And let me just secure my self. There's a lot that goes in behind the scenes on uh, on these on these videos. It's always fun. All right, here we go. Make sure that it we're about as high up as we can go. Okay, fabulous. Okay. So let's get started off. We're gonna again start off in Sukhasana. Tomorrow we're gonna to start off on our backs, but tonight I thought we'd start off again in Sukhasana. Sukhasana, for those who might be just coming on for the first time, is our easy posture. We sit crisscross. 
I always like to pad my bum with something. So either a blanket or a block, or you can use a combination of the two, depending on how high you want to go. This allows the floor to come up to you so that you can settle your knees down. And really while we're doing some weights, it might be a better idea if you have never sat on a block, you can also place two blocks together if you have a bigger derriere um, so that you can have a little bit of a lift. And that way, as you're doing these upper body movements in a seated position, you have um, a little bit more room to do those things. So I just encourage you to do that. So have your low and high weights up at the top near you. And then we'll get started. We're going to start off by closing the eyes if it feels safe to do so, or just bringing the gaze a few feet out in front of you. For some people, shutting their eyes is not a comfortable thing. So that's why I always offer those two options. But as you do, either way, just to be able to go inward in your practice, allowing your body to settle in on where you sit proprioceptively on your mats, and then by closing the eyes, allowing yourself to go interoceptively, looking at where are you physically feeling, emotionally, physically, without any sort of dialogue or judgment, you're just noticing as you find that breath in and out where you are, letting all the noises around you just dissipate and be part of the background. And following your breath now, as you breathe in and breathe out, being very grateful for the breath that you can breathe out. And then breathe out. Let's take three cleansing breaths together as we center ourselves, as we inhale in, arriving in this moment, and as we exhale out, letting go. Inhaling, coming into the now, and exhaling, releasing. Inhaling, arriving, and exhaling, letting go. Good. Let's inhale in. Open the eyes as we inhale and draw the arms up over the head. This first one, let's clasp our fingertips together and then shoot the palms. So you invert the palms and shoot them up toward the ceiling. So we're just stretching here. Stay here or maybe a tiny back bend. Reach up like you're going to touch the ceiling with the palms of your hands. Maybe you're on the computer today. Start to draw the hands slightly forward toward the camera. There you go. And now round the back. So you're kind of rounding the back, feeling the back of the, the shoulders. Sit up straight again and then take the hands back up toward the ceiling. Remove that bind and then come on down. Inhale, drawing the arms up, reaching up and extending. Steeple chase the fingertips, send them up toward the ceiling. Like you're gonna draw a circle with your fingertips on the ceiling. Bring the torso up very high so you're taking the navel back toward the spine as you're moving the body and then go in the opposite direction. So we're just stretching out the shoulders here because we're gonna be using the arms in just a moment. Come back up, back to your stationary static position as you come up neutral zone and then take that right arm down. Root that right hand down. And rise up, reach up with the left fingertips, take a circle with that left wrist. Let's come on over to the right side. These stretches should always feel really good. I love doing these because I think it's a great way to kind of start your practice. Let's come on up, come on up with both arms as we inhale and exhale down your left hand. Root down with that left hand, rise up with that right arm, and then let's head over to the left side. So reach and lengthen. Come on up, both arms. Let's twist over to the right side. Inhale. Exhale. Good deep belly breath in. Exhale out. Contract it back. Come back up to your neutral. Inhaling. As you exhale, let's twist over to the left side. Right hand to that left knee. Twist from the abdomen. Good deep inhale. Exhale. Inhaling in and exhaling out. Last time, coming up in the middle, reaching up and extending. So we did this last night. Take your right hand, bend it, bend that elbow, and place it in between the shoulder blades. I'm gonna have my back over here, we're just stretching here. Taking your elbow with your right hand, left hand to the el right elbow. 
And then let's head over as you take a nice bend over toward that left side. Come on up, inhaling, both arms reach up. And then drop that right, left hand in between the shoulder blades, grab your left elbow with your right hand, and then bend over toward the right side. Just stretching here. Come back up again as we inhale, crisscross the arms, and then take your right elbow now with your left hand. So we're just sweeping it over across the chest. Take a circle of that right wrist. Maybe make like you're going to play the piano with the fingers. So you're just using the fingertips. Go as far over as it feels good. And then let's switch it out. Take that left, left arm, left elbow. Little circle of that left wrist. Like you're gonna play the finger, the piano with your fingertips, so you're just moving the hands. And then come on back. Both arms coming out as you inhale, reach out, and then sweep the arms forward, send the back toward the back of the room. Inhale and exhale. And then drop it down. Just shrug the shoulders back, roll them back, and then roll them forward. And then let's grab your low weights just to start so we can kind of start off in a, in a good way. <laughs> With our arms down beside, so we, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna constantly kind of shift my position so that you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna be focusing on our biceps, our triceps, our deltoids. So we're gonna be focusing there as we start to move our bodies with our weights. We're gonna also be moving into position. So let's start off, hug the elbows in toward the midline. Roll the shoulders back so that the chest is forward so you've got good body alignment. Engage your core so you're using the core to help you power as you start to draw the weights up. So again, we're starting off with low weights just so that we can kind of get the action going. And we'll start to make that motion. You're just following me as we bring the weights up and down. You can go as slow or fast as you wanna go. I'm kind of going at my pace, you go at your pace. The main thing is, is that you're kind of getting that action. If you start to feel any sort of discomfort in your action, then just pause. Take a moment to just rest. Now take the arms, take the, the hands out toward your, the outside of your body, keep the elbows hugged in and now come up again. See if you can soften the shoulders as you go and sit the body up a little bit taller and remember your breath as you breathe in and breathe out. Just feeling that sensation of movement. And then drop the weights down, keep the weights in your hands, but we're going to start to go with our long, the longest part of our arm, we're going to draw the way up. So you're letting the weight come down toward the floor, the hands, the knuckles are up toward the ceiling, and then we're drawing the weight up and then hold that here. We're gonna rotate the wrists. And so again, just playing around a little bit with the weights so that we can start to get the sensation of what we're doing. And then we'll start to add to that. Start to make some tiny pulses. So you're gonna go down and up a couple of inches. My knuckles are facing up, uh, up toward the ceiling. Fingertips are down toward the floor. If this starts to compromise the shoulders, just take a pause and then come back. That's why we're using the low weights. For some of us, we're a little bit weaker in our upper body. Okay. And smile. Take a good breath in and out and then come on down. Let's drop, drop the weights. Now come on up, reach up and extend. Do that exercise again where you take your right hand in between your shoulder blades, grab your left, your right, right elbow with your left hand and then head over to the left side. Come on up as you rise up, inhaling. Switch it out and then head over to the right side. Reach up and extend both arms and then exhale down. Just roll the shoulders back and roll the shoulders forward. Grab your high weights now if you want to or keep the low weights in your hands. Again, so now we're hugging the elbows in, rolling the shoulders back so that the chest is forward. We're engaging the core. We're gonna to start to draw those weights back up again. And let's go for 10 and nine, eight 
and seven, and six, and five, four, three, two, and one. Pull the weights up here on your shoulders, hug them in toward your elbows, lift straight up. Hold that there for three and two. Let the navel come back toward the spine and one, come down. Bring them up and hold it for three and two. Hug the elbows in toward the, the temples and one and come down. Let's go again for three. Hug the elbows in toward the temples and two and one. Come down, this is our last one. Bring it up and hold it for three and two and one. Come down, bring them down toward your lap now and we're gonna to start to alternate. Alternate right and left. Hug the elbows in toward the midline as you pump. And breathe here. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. I'm conscious of my breath. I'm conscious of my movement. I'm alive and I'm grateful. Continue that posture. Let's go four more and three more and two more and one more. Good job, bring your weights down, shake the hands up. Just take a little wave of the arms. We're gonna roll over onto tabletop next. So have your low and high weights on either side of the mat so that that way you're able to access those weights. And let's come on to hands and knees. Remembering to pad your knees if you need to. Lower high weights on either side of your mat. And we'll get going. So in our tabletop position, we practiced cat-cow a couple of times. Let's go there tonight, just to start. Patting the hands in front of you. Knees about hip width distance apart. Take a good deep inhale in as you sway the back, looking up with eyes and chin. Let the shoulder heads rise toward the ceiling. And then as you exhale, rounding the back, tend the fingertips, send the shoulder heads up toward the ceiling. Like first one, like you're gonna play the piano. Take a little rock back and forth from side to side. Pad the hands, inhale as you sway, and then exhale as you round. Inhale to sway, and then exhale to round. Last time, inhale to sway, and then exhale to round. Good job. Let's come on to our knees. We're coming off of our hands. Grab those low and high weights. I'm changing it up. Now on our knees, hands, low weights if you want, or high weights, your choice. We're gonna start to take some long arm raises and then come on down. So notice what's happening. So we're reaching up, really using those shoulder blades. So start to draw the shoulder blades together as you draw the arms up and then come on down. So with purpose, start to bring the hands down. So almost like you're dragging the arms through sand with these low weights, you're coming up. Add to that, navel back toward the spine. So you're using the core. Add to that, start to tuck the pelvis slightly under. So you're really using your core strength as you're drawing the arms up. So you're not with your butt out, you've got your pelvis tucked forward and you're squeezing your buttocks a little bit and you've got that pelvis tucked. So you're really using the abdominal core to power you through this motion. So one of the things that I was just thinking about and actually talking about with some of our physical therapists at our hospital is how, we, how, how are they able to utilize their fingers as they're working through muscles and as they're working with clients and patients? And a lot of things that they said was, is to really like focus on the abdominal core as you're doing these postures. So 
as we move through even our individual days and what we're doing, if you're sweeping a floor or if you're, if you're cleaning a countertop, notice what you're doing with your abdomen as you're working. And so that's why as we're moving through this posture, I just wanted you to start to make a little mental note of that. And then let's pause here and take the weights down. Reach up and extend. We're just gonna stretch here. Steeple chase the fingertips, reach up and extend toward with you hugging your elbows in toward your, your temples. And let's head over toward the right side. So again, sometimes things that we explore on our mats, we may be able to carry into our everyday lives. Good deep inhale. Also, I worked a lot today with recovering patients that had hernias. <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot about all of this today as we're doing some of the work that we're doing. And as we do abdominals tomorrow, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Reach up and extend and then exhale down. Let's grab our high weights now and go back to those dumbbell curls, and then we're gonna do a couple more things. So again, start off for a minute. So stick your butt out, then draw the pelvis slightly forward, chest forward, elbows hugged in toward the body, and now let's raise the weights. You can either have the shoelaces part of your feet on the mat, or you can tuck your toes under, whatever feels straight, stronger and more stable for you. Really the first thing we wanna be focusing on more so is just what's happening with the arms and then what's happening in the core. And we're breathing as we draw up and back. Doing great. Breathing in, breathing out. And now start to alternate lifting one weight up and then the other. And let's go three more and two more and one more and down, grab your low weights. So reach up and extend with the arms. And now draw the, el draw the weights up under the armpit and then come back out again. Draw it up under the armpit and then come back out. We're only gonna do this a few times. Three more times. And two more times. You got this. One more time. Good job. Bring it down, roll the shoulders back, roll the shoulders forward, and then bring yourself back into tabletop and then have those weights right beside you. Hands down beside you, you're gonna take your low weight or your high weight, just actually just take your high weight just to start. Because we're gonna pick up, like you're gonna pick up a, a bag of groceries. We're gonna draw it up. So as I'm drawing that weight up, I'm hugging that elbow in toward the body and then I'm gonna come back down to the floor. See what's happening in your stomach now, in your abdomen. See if your navel can come back toward the spine so you're using the core as you're drawing up and then coming down. Draw it up and then come down. Come on up and then down. Let's go for six more. And five. Four. Three, two, and one. Drop that high weight, come to the low weight. Draw that grocery bag back up again, just like you were doing. Now push out and come back. Push it out, hugging that elbow in toward the midline and then come back up. So you're kicking it out and then coming back. Good job. Coming out and then back. Out, and back, and out, and back. Hopefully you're starting to feel that. And back, and go four more times. Back, three, and two, and one. We're gonna go right over to the other side. 
So taking your right hand down, grabbing that high weight. Here we are in tabletop. Set yourself up first by taking the navel back toward the spine. You can still breathe here. You're gonna draw the weight up and then come down. Draw it up and come down. Come on up and down. Find your breath. Let's go six more. And five, four, three, two, and one. Grab your low weight. Grab that low weight, come back up again, just like we were doing with the high weight, and now kick it out and come back. Bring it out and come back. Hug that elbow in toward the body. And back, back. Remember your breath. Let's go six more. And five, four, and three, two, and one. Good job. Drop the weight. We're gonna come into child's pose or puppy pose, your choice. So as we've been kind of learning, puppy pose can keep the hips high and we start to sink the heart low. On this one, you may wanna just let the forearms rest on the mat since you've been doing a lot of work. Or you can come into child's pose, remembering taking the knees out toward the edges of the mat, sinking your buttocks back toward your heels. And again, you're resting your head on the, on the mat, your forehead, and you can rest your forearms on so you can really get a good rest in this posture tonight. Take a good breath in and out. Feeling that good rest of the arms. We'll be feeling that tomorrow and that'll feel great to think about one another and where we are in day three of our challenge. If you have your forearms on the mat, take them off the mat and reach and extend with the arms now. So really like start to walk your fingertips up toward the top of the mat. So you're really reaching and extending and feeling a nice, good deep stretch. And then with your fingertips, see if you're able to push back. So you're pushing the buttocks back or if the hips are high, maybe you're sinking the heart a little lower just to give yourself a deeper stretch for just a minute and then you can come back to wherever you were. Let's walk our hands over toward the right side of our mat. So reaching and extending with the left pinky finger. And again, if you wanted, you could just rest your forearms on the mat and that might be a really good way to stretch tonight rather than extending the arms. Try it out both ways. And then we'll walk our hands back toward the midline. And then let's go on, on over toward the left side of the mat as we reach and extend with the right pinky finger. And again, forearms can be off the mat or on the mat, your choice. And we're breathing here. And then let's come on back. Come on back off of our hands. So we're coming up to a kneeling position. I'm gonna have my back to you for just a moment. We're just gonna stretch here. So either you can clasp your hands and send them below the sacrum one way, or if that doesn't work for you, you can just grab your elbows with your arms. Either way, are you able to kind of draw those in together? Now for some of you, and I'm still working on this because I haven't done it in a while, is to do a reverse namaste. So that's another thing, do a reverse prayer position. So that's another thing you can do as well. A lot of us have different abilities, but either way, we're opening up the chest here. We're just stretching before we go into our favorite plank for the day. We're gonna go into two tonight since we're doing upper body. We'll do one at the beginning and one toward the end of practice. So just stretching here as you go. Feeling the openness of the chest. This gets us almost into what we call a camel posture, which we'll be doing later. 
not now. And now just roll the shoulders back and then forward. And then let's go into plank and then we're gonna come up to standing and start to do some standing postures with our weights. So coming into plank pose, we're gonna do an upper body plank pose uh, or if you feel like doing forearm plank tonight, you can stay on your forearms. So either the hands are starfished out in front of you or you're on forearms and your elbows are right underneath your shoulders, your choice. If you're in, you wanna do the upper body plank, you're gonna bring one foot out, then bring the other foot out, drop the butt and shift the weight slightly forward. If you're looking down at your mat, you're noticing the abdomen as it engages. We're starting to hug the elbows in. So as you hug the elbows in, you're rolling the elbows in and underneath the body so that you really feel the strength and stability of that upper body as you come into this position. You're pushing away from the floor and really feeling strong so that you could even lift up one foot and then the other if you want it or not. Your choice. Breathing here. Let's come in for three more breaths. Good deep inhale. Exhale. Another good deep inhale in. And an exhale out. Push away from the floor. Last time, good deep breath in. And an exhale. Drop the knees down. Come off of your hands. Great job. Do a little shake of the hands. Grab your yoga blocks. I know we said no yoga blocks tonight, but let's come up to standing together. We'll just do a quick stretch. We're gonna take that right foot forward. Hands on your yoga blocks. And then just start to dip forward in this lunge. We're just stretching here. We'll stretch the hips. You can tuck the toes of that right foot, left foot under rather, and dry up, up the right, the left knee just to come into a little bit of a lunge here. We're just stretching. Before we go into our warriors, let's bring that left knee back down again. Drag your right foot back behind to meet your left knee. Right, left foot's gonna come forward. Start to shift the weight slightly forward. So we're just coming into a lunge here. Tuck the toes of the right foot under and draw that right kneecap up. Just breathing here, you can walk your blocks up so they frame your left foot. And then drop that right knee back down. Left foot's gonna drag and come to meet, the left knee comes to meet the right knee. So remove the blocks. Let's put, bring our hands back into starfish in front of us underneath the shoulders. And then we're gonna come into downward facing dog so we can come up to standing. We're tucking the toes under and drawing the hips up toward the ceiling, buttocks toward the ceiling. A gentle bend in the knees. Start to notice if, in this new downward facing dog on day three, maybe you're going a little bit deeper in the posture. Maybe the hamstrings are starting to kind of warm up to the idea of what's happening. We're dropping one heel down and then the other. You can shake the head yes. Yes to the possibilities of this practice and no. Eliminating any negativity that might have happened today or this week. Just shake it out. That feels good to you. And then slowly we'll start to walk our feet toward our hands. Let's come up to a half lift with hands to the shins. And then exhale to forward fold. Slowly roll the body up. Come all the way up to standing. Reach up and extend both arms coming up. And exhale down. Good deep inhale here. Reach up and extend both arms coming up. And exhale down. And we'll walk over here so we have a little bit more room rising up. Exhale down just the right arm. Rise up with that left arm and then let's head over to the right side. Come on up, both arms as we inhale in. And exhale down, left arm. Reach up and extend with that right arm and then let's head over to the left side. Come on up as we rise, good deep inhale. And then exhale down the arms. Just roll the shoulders back and roll the shoulders forward. 
We're going to grab our low weights so that we can go in and out of a couple of warriors together, but have your high weights toward the top of your mat so that you can access those. So we'll step in and out of warriors with our weights just to add a little bit of load to what we're doing. So same thing, if we say hands come to prayer, are you able to draw the elbows in toward one another? Let's look at that for just a moment. So as we draw the elbows in toward one another, see if you're able to lift up and then come down. Lift up and then come down. And notice, butt sticks out, start to tuck the pelvis under so you're engaging the buttocks. Slight bend in the knees as you go, kind of creates a little bit more load. And we're focusing on the breath here as we come up. Three more. And two more. And one more. Come on down. It might be a little bit intense on the shoulders. So let's come up. Let's reach up and extend. Both arms coming up. Exhale, hands come to prayer. You don't have to bring the elbows in. They can kind of come in just a little bit. Draw that right knee up, hold it here. See if you're able to grow a little taller on that left side and then kick out right foot. Let's step it back into warrior one. Reach up with the weights. Take your left foot over toward the left side of the mat. Good deep inhale here. So I'm gonna face you. And now we're gonna come out like goal posts and then come back up again. Come out like goalposts and then come on up. So we're breathing here. Slight lean forward so you're not really compromising that lower back. And then coming up, face you still. Coming down, back up. Coming down and back up. Last time and back up. And then come on down. Just roll the shoulders back. We're going to stay in this position just one more minute. So left hand to the thigh, leaning forward, we're going to draw that weight up and come back down. Now, if you want to add load here, if this is too easy for you, you could grab that high weight now. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Grab that high weight. Just keep that low weight in the left hand if you want. Now we're gonna be kicking back that weight in a minute. So if you need to grab that low weight again, go there or keep your high weight, your choice. But we're leaning forward on that left leg. If this hurts the knee, then just come off of it. Not a big deal. You can still do the same exercise. Let's go three more, two, and one, grab your low weight now, come on, up, come on up and then kick it out and come back and kick it out and come back. Kick it out and come back. Kick it out and come back. Draw that weight back and come back. And last time, and come on back. Come all the way up, so drawing the torso up, reach up and extend, both arms coming up. We're gonna step that right foot forward, right foot comes to meet the left, and we're gonna go right over to the other side as we inhale in, and exhale in, Tadasana. We're gonna go over to the other side now. So inhale as we rise, reaching up and extending, both arms coming up. Exhale, hands to prayer, that left knee's gonna come up. Pause here for just a second. Grow a little taller on that right side. Kick out with that left foot and hold it. And then let's step back into warrior one. Reach up and extend, both arms coming up. Good deep inhale here. And exhale. Inhale here, I'm gonna face you. And exhale, we're gonna goal post the arms and then come back up. I need to let somebody in. Goal post the arms and come back up. Goal post the arms and come back up. Goal 
we'll post the arms and come back up. Goal post the arms, come back. Reach up and come back. Reach up and come back. Last time and come back and drop. So here we are now. Leaning forward, we're still in our warrior one posture. Right hand comes to the right, right top of thigh. Left hand's gonna draw up and come back down. Draw it up and come back down. If you wanna grab that high weight, grab that high weight, draw it up. You can take that right foot over toward the right side of the mat, just so that you get a really good firm foundation here. A little bend in that left knee so that you're not locking it in. See if you're able to squeeze your left buttock just a little bit though, as you're drawing up. And let's breathe here as we go. Breathing in and out. Let's go to four more and three more, two more, and one more. Drop that weight down or take it, keep it up, and then let's kick it back. You might want to take your low weight now or take the high weight and keep it going. Take a look down toward the top, top of the mat. Hug that elbow in toward the midline. You're not letting that elbow wing out. Engage your core here. And let's go for 10 more. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Draw both weights up, reach up and extend. And then let's come up to prayer. Left foot's gonna to come to meet the right as we inhale in and exhale in to dasana. Let's drop the weights for just a moment so that we can stretch. We'll reach and extend, both arms coming up. Exhale down. Let's do one warrior without weights, reaching up, inhale. As we exhale, hands to prayer, right knee is gonna come up as we inhale in. Exhale, kick out that right foot and hold it for three, and two, and one. Draw that right leg back, kick back and hold it for three, and two, and one, and place it down. Reach up, warrior one, inhaling. Exhale, step up. Right foot comes to meet the left. Inhaling in. Exhaling to Dasana. Rise up as you reach. Good deep inhale. Exhale, hands to prayer. Left knee is going to come up. Inhaling in. Exhaling as you kick out. Hold it for three. And two. And one. Draw that left knee in. Kick it back, but don't touch down and hold it for three. Two. One. Touch it down, reach up, good deep inhale. And an exhale, step forward, right. Left foot comes to meet the right. We're gonna make our way down to the floor. Have your weights close by. We're gonna do some things on our backs. And then we're gonna do a little bit of trigger point with our ball. Good deep inhale here. Exhale into Dasana. Reach up and extend with an inhale. Exhale as we forward fold, a gentle bend in the knee. Inhale to a half lift, flat back. Knees slightly bent. Exhale to forward fold. Make your way down to the floor. Again, ball and tennis, a uh, tennis ball and weights close by. Come onto your backs just for a moment. Knees are bent. Just setting myself up. Let's take a few moments to do a couple of bridge postures. So find your heels with your fingertips. Knees are about hip width distance apart. We're tucking the tailbone, scooping it up. So you're flattening that lower back in the mat. 
barely lifting buttocks off the mat so you can squeeze your buttocks and then bring them down to the mat. So we're not coming all the way up into a bridge posture. We're just lifting up the hips and then settling it back down on the mat. Scooping up, lifting it up and squeezing and then coming back down again. Scooping up, squeezing and coming down. Now we're gonna lift them all the way up toward the ceiling. So lifting the hips all the way up and hold that for three, two, and one. Come on down. Go again. Lift it up and hold it for three, two, one. Come on down. Bring it up and hold it for three, two, one. Come on down. Let everything rest. Grab your low or high weight, your choice. I'm gonna grab my high weights. Elbows, your, the backs, the triceps are on the mat. I'm gonna face you. My dumbbells are parallel to the mat. I've got my head up right now just so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm down on the mat and now I'm gonna reach up and then come back down. So my triceps are resting on the mat when I come down. So almost like I'm doing a press and then coming down. So you don't come, have to come all the way down to the mat, but just about touching. We're keeping the hands right above the chest as we push. And we're breathing here. Now notice what else is happening. So you're scooping that tailbone under. So I was doing that for a reason. So you're using your core strength to power these weights going back up toward the ceiling. And you're engaging the core as you push. A lot of things that we start to just kind of let go because we're focusing more on lifting the weight, but that abdominal core is really essential to actually making this power happen. Our core strength is a lot more important than we think. Coming up and back down. So let's let, so now keep the weights to, to your, keep the elbow, the triceps on the floor. And now we're gonna bring the weights out and then come back. So we're coming out and then coming back in. We're coming out and then back in. If you need to change weights, go there. We're gonna go eight more and seven, six, and five, four, and three. Again, flatten that lower back two and one. Drop those down and then come back up. So now we're, we're pushing the weights down toward the floor and then we're picking them back up again. So we're not curling, we're not doing a dumbbell curl yet. We're pushing the weights down and then we're picking them back up. A little bit different. Hug those elbows in toward the midline as much as you can. You might be brushing your thighs with your weights. We're gonna go four more. Now tuck that tailbone, so scoop the tailbone so that the pelvis sends it up toward the ceiling. You're pushing with the soles of your feet so that you're slightly lifting the sacrum slightly up, but the lower back is in the mat, so you're using your core. Now flip the weights over, hug the elbows in toward the body and curl up and then come back down. And curl up. Go four more and three more, two more and one. Great job. Now I wouldn't let us forget one more plank. So roll over onto your stomach. This time we're gonna be doing a forearm plank. So like you're in a Sphinx pose, so we got our elbows bent, our elbows are right underneath our shoulder blades. We have our palms flat and we're starfishing our fingertips. Right now we're on our pelvis 
We're gonna tuck our toes under and start starts to sit that pelvic bone on the mat. So you're scooping your tailbone under, you're engaging your buttocks. You're gonna to start to drag the elbows toward your chest so that you're feeling that strength and stability of the, the arms and then start to pick the hips up off, this, off of the floor. And let's hold that here for three, two, engage your core and one, we're not going down yet. Take a good breath in and out, you've got this. Send the buttocks a little bit higher and take a good breath in and out. Last good breath in and out. Drop the pelvis down, roll back over onto your back. Great job. Have your ball close by now. So let's do a few, let's do a little bit of massage first. So first we're gonna take our T-shape, our right arm. We're gonna take our tennis ball. We're gonna put it right in the sternum, right in the middle of our chest and roll it there, right where your heart is. So really gently roll it there and offer up a little bit of self-love. Look what you just did. What a great day we've had together as we work on our upper bodies. Start to take that tennis ball and as you're rolling it in a circular fashion, now you're going toward that armpit area, toward the shoulder, and start to roll that ball there. Now you can start to go down the arm. So we're just rolling the tennis ball down the arm with our left hand. You might need to roll over just slightly so that you can make your way down as far as you wanna go. And remember, you can go on the outer part of the arm too. You're giving yourself a little bit of a massage. Now, if this is boring to you, that's cool, no worries. <laughs> what you can do is you can take the tennis ball and then I'm gonna face my back toward you so you can see what I'm doing. You can take the tennis ball, place it underneath the shoulder in a place that might be a real trigger point for you here, up in the neck area. And now with your back flat on the mat, you can access that trigger point by just laying gently on the ball. Now this might find, you might find yourself in a very intense posture. It might be like, oh wow, this is, you know, it hurts so good kind of a feeling, you know? So just allow yourself to be there. If you're not rolling your ball on the front part of your chest and you're just focusing on that back trigger point, Give yourself a minute to take a breath in and a breath out, just be. Let yourself just kind of melt into that area. What we know about the muscle as we start to work the muscles with our fingers or the tennis ball is almost like when you're putting your finger into a piece of taffy. That's how our muscle really responds to these trigger point parts of what we're doing. And so after a while, the taffy starts to soften with that finger or the ball. And so that's really what we're doing here. Now, the other thing you can do too, if it's not too intense on you, is you can take the buttocks, just like we were doing in this last exercise of a, a tiny bridge posture. You can lift your buttocks slightly off the mat, and now you've got a little room to kind of roll around on the ball. Now, not everybody wants to do that because it might be a little bit too intense for you, but that's an option for you. By taking your bum off the floor, you can kind of roll the shoulder onto that ball. See how that all feels. So we're just playing around. We're experimenting a little bit with the ball and getting used to that. And hopefully that feels really good on a Friday night after a long uh, week of work or whatever you are doing. And you're breathing here, allowing the body just to release into that. Really feel the sensation of having worked the arms and getting into good shape together. And then we'll go over to the other side. So we'll T-shape out that left arm Taking the tennis ball, again, so we wanna start off in the midline in our sternum, right in the, in the chest, well in there, and then start to take a circle with the ball, with your 
the palm of your hand, and then start to move the ball over toward that left breast, left chest area. And again, you can decide how big you want to go. I mean, you may really want to go around the breast, or you may want to go, you know, lower on the rib cage. So it's your it's your practice. It's your massage. But then start to send the ball over, you know, around toward the left side of the shoulder, shoulder head, outside of the shoulder, and down the arm. Or if you just want to go straight for the back, then go there. So it's your choice as you massage and explore. And again, remembering those trigger points in the back. And this side might be very different from the other. So you know, as human beings, we carry our stress in different parts of our bodies. And so you know, this side of the body might be where you carry the most of your stress. Also for you know, some of us who are using backpacks or using purses and the purses or backpacks might be heavy or luggage, depending on what you do in, in your career or, or in your personal life. Um, you know, you might be carrying things around, children, <laughs> lots of things, doggies, cats, um, you know, so anyway, lots of, uh, lots of reasons why we may be holding a little bit more tension in one side versus the other, and then also just being aware of maybe where we usually carry our tension, and if it happens to be on that trigger point on, on the left side of your shoulder, then offer up a little bit of release to that area with the ball. And remember your breath. And it may be that once you go over to one side, you need to switch it back to the other side. And sometimes we need to kind of revisit areas that might have had tension in them. So that's just on offer as well. Another good area is kind of right behind, uh, it would be right on the scapula area, I guess. Supra, supraclavicular, I think I, if I remember my anatomy correctly, and that's um, if you take your hand to your armpit and then you just kind of walk your fingertips over and back toward your shoulder. Uh, it's kind of that area of the shoulder that really kind of holds a lot of tension. And that um, is a great place to, to add that tennis ball to that area. So once you've had enough of that, you can continue to do that. Or if you're ready to just do a, a little one, one stretch before we go into Shavasana, let's take our right knee in toward our chest and extend that left leg long. Take a circle with both ankles. We're gonna externally rotate. So you're taking your right hand to your right knee and just opening it up. We're gonna send that left arm up and over the body. So a nice long stretch from the left fingertips down to the left toes. Breathing here. And then we're gonna slowly start to rotate that right knee across the body and T-shape out that right arm again. We're coming into this reclined twist. So that left hand kind of pulls that right knee across the body. And here you are in this twist. Take a good deep belly breath in and out. And then we'll draw the right knee back in toward the body and switch it out. Take the left knee and extend the right leg long. Take a circle with the ankles. And then we'll draw that left knee across the body. Catch it in your right hand. T-shape out that left arm. Bring your gaze over toward that left outstretched palm. Take a good deep breath in and out. Come on back, bring the legs long, throw the arms up and over the head gently. Take opposite hand and opposite foot as you reach and extend and lengthen. 
in opposite directions. Let's walk our feet and our hands over toward the right side of our mat, right corners of our mat. Gently grab your left wrist with your right hand if you want to extend that angle a little further. Come back over toward the midline and over toward the left side. Fan the hands over toward the left side of the mat and maybe gently grab your right wrist with your left hand if you want to intensify that stretch. And then let's come all the way back, back into our Shavasana. It's a great time to cover up the body or you can bring the legs up the wall of your choice. As you breathe in and breathe out, just coming into stillness and your final rest before we close our practice together. And softening your words to some of your attention to the words as we close our practice with Shavasana. I just wanted to share this short affirmation. This one comes from Deepak Chopra on using positive words to shift your thoughts and your actions. For many of us, our barriers to forgiveness is not laziness or pride. It comes from our lack of belief and our own ability to be forgiving or loving. As we know, we actualize what we tell ourselves. When we speak nicely to ourselves, we manifest more beauty and peace. When we speak negatively to ourselves, we're more likely to emit negativity to others. We can use positive words to shift our thoughts and actions. Saying to ourselves, I am capable of love and forgiveness. It becomes not only a mantra for cutting through the excess layers of the mind, but also an intention. Repetition of this intention is a useful way of turning desire for change into a habitual pattern of openness and love. So the next time you're having a hard time moving on from a situation or problem, you can use, I am capable of love and forgiveness to reverse these notions that you won't be able to forgive or forget. You are capable of anything you put your mind to, so long as you're willing to believe in yourself. Slowly start to make some movement to your fingers and to your toes. Waking the body back up. Coming back into awareness, rolling the body over toward the right or to the left side as you cradle your head and your arm. And in this moment, thanking yourself for coming to your mat today for our day three together. Well done. And then as you're ready, coming up to a comfortable seat. Just bringing yourself back up, keeping the eyes closed or the gaze soft to finish your practice. Notice how you feel in this moment. It's a little different than when you started. Tonight, let's bring our hands back to prayer. In yoga, there's this belief that there's a divine spark in everyone. And it's located right here in our heart chakra, right where our hands are placed. It affects the ability to love and to open to possibilities. 
So as we gesture namaste to one another, we acknowledge that spark and the soul in another person. Literally translated, nama means bow, and I, te, means you. So I'm bowing to you, I'm bowing to me. Namaste to one another, and have a lovely, lovely evening. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, nine o'clock for abdominals. <laughs> I hope <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you guys so much for the practice tonight. I really enjoyed it.